So number 13 then, the last question in paper two, and in part B, of the 2021 Advanced Tire Resource Paper. Well, complex numbers. Argand diagram, roots. So what does it say, first of all? Just for the one mark. Express negative one in polar form, in the form cos theta plus I sine theta. Now the best way to do that is just draw a little, di little quick Argand diagram. That's the real part, remember? That's the imaginary part. Where is negative one? It's over here. So the two parts would be, how far away is it? Well, it's a one, so that's not going to affect anything. What angle is it? Well, it's 180 degrees. But putting that in terms of radians, that's pi radians round. So that's it then. So negative one will be caught, well, one times, so don't need to show the one, cos pi plus i sine pi. Put one mark. Right, part B, again for the one mark, use the Morvis theorem to show that Z1, this number here, is a root of this equation. And the rest of the question just seems to be along the line, roots of this equation. I mean, you could just have said, just solve that. Solve that equation, find the five roots, and that would be most of the question, rather than, it doesn't matter. First part, show it work. Well, that means if it's a root, if you have to substitute it in, this should work, it should come to zero. So just pop it into that. Cos pi upon five. It's a bit tedious writing cos, and then just keep repeating the same thing. Pi upon five to the power of five plus one equals zero. There's a shorthand for that which I might start using, instead of writing cos of the angle plus i sine of the same angle, you can use the abbreviation that just goes CIS of the angle. Don't know if you'd be allowed to do that in the exam though, but I might just do that here to save me writing cos of it plus i sine of it. Anyway, De Mavras, if you've got a number in polar form, complex number in polar form, and you're multiplying numbers, what happens is you add, you multiply the modulus, the multiplying numbers at the front, but you add the angles, you add the arguments. So if you're multiplying this five times, you're adding that angle five times, which means it's just five times the angle. So effectively, whatever's outside the bracket as a power comes in and multiplies the angle. So this transforms into cos pi plus i sine pi plus one. Now, in the first part, you just had that that was equal to negative one. I think well, I sh maybe I shouldn't put equals zero. And because I'm trying to def I'm trying to discover if that will in fact come to zero. So I'll just put equals. So that can get replaced by negative one. So that now equals zero, which means that Z1 is a root because it worked because it gave the answer zero. But there's only one mark for doing all that. So now into part C, so there's a wee bit before it. The complex number Z2 is also a root of this same equation. Root Z1 and Z Z1 and Z2 have been plotted on this Argand diagram. Express Z2 in the form of cos theta plus I sine theta in polar form for one mark. And then you have to do the same again in part D for the remaining ones. So rather than asking you to, which well, looks like, asking you just to solve that directly and get the various roots, you're meant to use the result that you know, which would be if you were to plot the results, the five roots that would result from this, they would be equally spaced around a circle. So if there's five roots, then each of them would be f a one fifth of a revolution apart. So Z2 should be the same as Z1. I was, just, I was going to put that shorthand, but I'll just put it down. Cos of, it would be pi upon five, but plus a fifth of a revolution, which is two pi divided by five, plus I sine, etc. I think I'll just do that. How about that? So spelling that out, that would be cos. So that means you've got three fifths altogether. 
So 3 pi upon 5 plus i sine 3 pi upon 5. Now, that's worth a mark. So part D, the remaining roots are Z3, Z4, Z5. You have to put them down the same way as this, only you have to put down the principal argument. So that means the shortest way round to it. The argument, which is the angle, in its smallest form. So this is just like, solve that. Of course, if you were to go through the proper solution for that, you would just end up with an... We'll just put a quick note of it here, then rub it out. If you were solving that, then you would say z to the 5 would equal negative 1, if that's what the question just said straightforwardly. So z to the 5 is equal to this. So z to the 5 would be, and the negative 1, and that would be the point of this, would be cos pi plus i sine pi, which I'm just going to write as cis after that. So z is going to be that. So I'm just going to put cis now. Oh, no, I'll just have to do that. Cis pi to the fifth. Now, pi, which was round here. That would be the same if it was just pi, or if it was pi plus another 2 pi, or another 4 pi, or another 6 pi. Pi is the same as pi, with any number of 2 pi's added on to it. Now, normally you wouldn't bother doing that, because it just keeps taking you back to the same place. But if you're going to do, using De Mauvres, a fifth of that, it means the various answers you get will be this pi plus k lots of 2 pi divided by 5. Then you just go through the possibilities. So when k is 0, you'll have pi upon 5. There it was there. When k is 1, you'll have 3 pi upon 5. There it's there. When k is 2, you'll have 5 pi upon 5, etc. And that would just list them all. But the thing to notice is they're all the same distance apart. You keep adding on k times, you keep adding on 2 pi upon 5. They're all 2 pi upon 5 apart. So they would all lie in a circle, because they're all going to have the same modulus, the same size, which is just 1 in this case. They're all going to lie in a circle, equally spaced out by 2 pi upon 5, so it's 2 pi upon 5. And the next one's there, and then down here, and then down there. Another thing you know is, these roots appear in conjugate pairs. So if Z1's a root, then the one directly below it will also be a root. Same real part, opposite imaginary part. Same with this, that should be directly below it. So 1, 2, so that'll be 3, that'll be 4, and that'll be 5. So it's just a case of putting them all down. So what are they then? So Z3 is going to be that plus another 2 pi upon 5. So it'll be cos pi plus i sine pi. Because another two bits on top makes it five, so that's fine. Z4, though, we're going to go overboard, because this time it's going to be, now you add on another two to the top, because remember there was one on top, then it's three, now it's five, now it's going to be seven. That would be seven pi upon five. Plus i sine pi, which is no use, because they want to the argument in its principal form, so that means, oops, what have I done there? So you'll have to go round the other way to get it, round to here. It just, it just means it'll be the opposite of Z2. So you had Z2. So that's going to be cos negative 3 pi upon 5. So that'll be that one, not having myself room to write Z5 underneath. It's a bash, bad planning up here. Just have to put it here. And Z5 will be, well, just using the same pattern as before, by adding on two bits to the top. Now you've gone up to 9 pi upon 5, which is no use. It is a correct argument, but it's not the principal argument. Which, of course, would be, it should be the same as this, because that'll just be the conjugate complex number to that. So that's just going to be, or you can just think, 
So we've got nine bits that way out of the ten, just go one back. Uh, unfortunately, that's a bit messy. So just by adding 2 pi upon 5 on each time and then sorting it down to get the principal argument, to get the angle the shortest way to it. So there was two marks for that. There was one for getting at least one of them, doesn't matter which one, and then one mark for getting the remaining two. Then the last part, part E for two marks, given that the sum of the roots must come to zero, which is another thing, I, just as well as knowing that they're equally spaced around a circle, you should also know that if you were just to, remember, those are just coordinates, that if you were to add up all the coordinates, they must come to zero because the, the circle's centred at zero. And if you've got points equally spaced around a circle, then the average of their coordinates must be zero, must form that centre, must form zero. It's easy to see in the case of the imaginary ones, because for every one above, this is the y coordinates, for every one above, there's another one below. They'll cancel out, they'll cancel out, and that one's on the axis anyway. Maybe not so obvious about why the ones across the way, the x's would all cancel out. But you can just think of it, if you've got a disc, and you put five weights equally spaced around that disc, where would it balance? It would balance at the centre, because all the x's and y's cancel out. But anyway, it's telling you that that's the case. It says if that's the case, show that you get this expression here. Well, that means you just put them all back in again. So you put the whole load of these back in. Now you could write them all out, the whole lot, cos plus i sine, cos plus i sine, cos plus i sine, cos plus i sine, and so on, until you've got them all written out. Or you could realise that the imaginary parts are going to come out to zero anyway, and just put the real parts down. So the real parts were just putting them back in order because I've got them there. So I started off with cos and it was pi upon 5. And then the next one was add another 2 on top, 3 pi upon 5. Now add another 1 on top, well that's just cos pi. Now add another 2 on top, but in fact it's just going to be this the other way around, so cos negative 3 pi upon 5. And then another 1 on top making 9, but you had that before, so that'll be the cos negative pi upon 5. That's what they add up to. That those are the real parts. The real parts of this come to this. Now, so if that comes to zero, the real part of that zero, that's equating the real parts. Is that worth a mark? It is worth a mark. Now you can start tidying that up because there are some things that you know. You know that that comes to negative one. And you know that the cosine is symmetrical. It's an even function, it goes like this. So the cosine of an angle and the cosine of its negative angle is the same thing. So cos pi upon 5 is the same as cos negative pi upon 5. So that tells you you've got two lots of cos pi upon 5. Those two are the same. Two lots of cos 3 pi upon 5. And you know that that comes to negative 1. So that lot comes to 0, and there you are. So I'll take that one across, and I'll take the common factor of 2 across as well. I'm just left with, oh, I'll just put it down this way first of all. 2 lots of cos pi upon 5, and 2 lots of cos 3 pi upon 5 comes to 1. So cos pi upon 5 plus cos 3 pi upon 5 comes to 1 upon 2.